Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hey everyone, uh, we're in episode 10, double digits. <laughs> I feel like a kid, you're like, whoa, I'm 10. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, sorry, I'm going to drink a little more coffee. It's early. It is <clears throat> uh, Thursday, October 12th. For everybody who's watching, it probably will be the 13th or later. And uh, yeah, I've got so many things to share today. We are going to go through all the normal stuff, plus some more information about my spinning class that I took last weekend and the weekend before um, at La Mercerie on Bainbridge Island. I will also talk a little bit about our knitting plans for this weekend. Um, and I had a couple of questions about things that I do while knitting. So I'm going to talk about some of those things. Um, but yeah, hi, <laughs> welcome. Uh, for anyone who's new here, my name is Megan. I live just north of Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I live with my husband, Mike, my daughter, Theo, and my mom, Cindy, who is our full-time living grandma nanny. <laughs> and she's the best. Uh, and our dog, Winter. We can't forget about her. She's um, the princess of the house. She doesn't often make an appearance in here because um, it's early when I film. And also, so that means that she's sleeping on my spot in the bed right now. And, or... <laughs> If I'm filming later in the day, she's usually in Mike's office sleeping. She sometimes will lay down here with me. She just doesn't like it when I'm like talking the whole time and she'll grumble while I'm filming. So I have to kick her out. <laughs> she's a dog of many opinions. Anyway, um, let's just get started. Let's get started with what I am wearing, which is something I, I did post with the how do I wear my makes video um, a couple of weeks ago. I did share this, but I didn't talk about any of the details and I didn't even post what the pattern was when I shared it. So um, new to you guys and not new to me, this is my third ever knit sweater and it was a test knit. It was my first test knit sweater. I think that's true. Um, and it's okay. So the pattern is called Evanescence. I'll post a picture up here, here of like the original sample from the designer. Um, this is designed by Ksenia Nadian, I think is how you say her last name. Um, she is Life is Cozy on Instagram. And she is um, a designer in the Bay Area. So I don't even know how I found her. Like she's got a bunch of um, also like accessory patterns I really like so maybe that's where I found her first but I was testing some hats I tested some like mittens and other things mostly really small designers and then I saw this I think it was like maybe on her newsletter that's probably how um I found out about it and I decided to try to test a sweater so do a sweater in a timeline which was the first time for that too um so I made this in December of well it would have been like fall, but it was finished December of 2021. So, um, it is a worsted, let's go over some details first. So it is a worsted weight sweater and it is knit. You can see all these stripes. It is knit sideways. Um, the construction is actually super fun. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, sideways, it's got, uh, two by two, cuffs and the collars also two by two um but the bottom is not um so i will show you the bottom has this fun like sideways rib detail um it is two by two but it is two by two sideways uh and it just you just end your knitting and you block it so that it doesn't flip and it's it's pretty good um it is a rather boxy fit and it is, uh, then you pick up for sleeves and you, you knit those, um, in the round. It is seamed, 
but the seaming was actually not bad. I didn't, I didn't mind it as much as I thought I would. Um, and then it's got some back and neck shaping, uh, within, you know, your flat lay, and then you just pick up and, uh, and knit the neckline. So I knit this in a size, you guys, I looked at my Ravelry and I don't have it written down. I'm pretty sure that, um, I would have knit it with a finished chest of 49.5, which is a size five. At the time, I was probably a tiny bit smaller than I am now. So this like seems like the right, um, the right thing I would have done. The recommended ease is at least six inches. So as boxy as you want to go, but six inches. Um, I want to make this one again, actually. So this, I made this using, this is all line brand woolies, which is so good for a budget sweater. It's not the very softest yarn you've ever felt. And especially like this Tweety one, it's a little pokey. Um, it washes well though. It is, you know, whatever that mix is, 80% acrylic, 20% wool. You know, I, if I, if that's not right, I'll correct myself with text. <laughs> um, but it is soft enough to the touch. The worsted weight is good. It's super affordable. Um, and it whole, it like has good structure because it's like an acrylic yarn, right? Um, it's not going to get stretched out. It's not super wash. Not that this sweater is like so much heavier than other things. Um, but it was nice, like, you know, in one of my first makes to have something that had like a little bit of structure was pretty heavy duty and also it's worsted. So at the time, obviously one of my first sweaters, I was like, oh, it's still so hard, <laughs> hard to get it done in a timeline. Um, it was hard maybe to go right into like a flat lay sweater, but actually it was not very painful to do. I think probably the hardest part, and you can see here, it's, this is a three needle bind off. I think at the top, it feels like there's a seam here. Um, and you do like match your stripes up. So that was like pretty fun. Uh, I think the hardest part though was like picking my colors and then my stripes. I did my stripes relatively close to her sample. And I think she gives you like what she did, but you can literally do anything you want. You can use as many colors as you want. You could probably get away doing this with like fingering how double, like this would be a good stash busting thing if you wanted to. Um, I've seen other things like this that do this. And I know like the AC sweater is really popular right now. And that's like a right down the middle, but similar construction, except you don't have to seam. You start, you go all the way around. And then I think you, I don't know what the bind off is. I'm watching Ariel make it, <laughs> who is in our group Pacific Knit West. And I've seen it live and it's very cute, but also just watching her progress on her podcast to figure out what the construction is because it's something I'm interested in making um because I felt really satisfied with this make I will say you know now that I've knit a lot of other things I don't know that I totally love that the edge is sort of just like a selvage edge it's fine it holds up fine in this sturdier yarn um I would I mean like sewing in ends and stuff I'm, I'm better at all of these tasks and um and skills now so yeah, it's something I think I would make again, though. And I think you could, like, relatively easy, easily, like, size down for a kid even because it's just such a boxy fit. If I did some math for, like, the neckline, she doesn't need as much shaping, and I think I could do it. Um, it'd be a fun way to, like, use up baby color scraps. <laughs> and, like, maybe even acrylic yarn because I just have that from baby blankets and stuff. Um, okay, so the Evanescence. Uh, I just, I love it. I like the fit. The only thing actually I think I would change also in another one is I might make this collar a little deeper, um, like, and maybe even change the neck shaping to make it like that a little deeper and the collar a little wider. Um, I don't remember if there's really back shaping and that's something that I think you could probably add, but the real thing I would change is the cuffs. These are fine. What I have realized since making more sweaters for myself is I don't really like when cuffs flop around like this. Like it's just open to the world. It's not as easy to push up because there's not enough tension. Um, and so I think if I did this again, I would just do some shaping in this last, you know, like little bit here that's covered by the cuff anyway. And 
decrease to at least have like you know even doing like that sort of bishop style sleeve again where it's just tighter flipped cuff or not even at that point you could probably just do a tighter you know two and a half inch cuff or something that's a difference I would make the design is cute I I mean I I like that I made it as is obviously for the test and that was kind of part of that um but now knowing my preferences I would change that I won't change it on this because it's not worth it to go back. Um, I do, I love the colors I picked. These are not really my palette colors, but I think they're very fun. Um, there's enough of the cream to really offset this like golden yellow on me. Um, and at the time I really want it to be like a fall. In my brain, I want it to be a fall palette. <laughs> I want all the mustard things. I want, I love the color. Um, I really just don't love it on me. So the things you learn. Um, okay. Let's talk about finished objects. I have two and they're sweaters. I didn't just like go around making hats this week, which it's winter coming, coming to winter. Don't, don't think that won't happen. Um, the first one I will show you is my Whitmore for Sarah. It's done. It's blocked. It's beautiful. It did really nicely block out. These grew not a ton, but they did grow. It definitely got a little bit wider, which is too pattern. It's pretty close. Um, I'll take measurements later today and I will pop them in the Ravelry page with some pictures of it hanging on my wall, which I'll include at least one of those here because I can't try it on. It doesn't fit me. Um, it's too small for that, but it will fit her hopefully. And she just told me they're getting a cold snap on the East coast. So she's really excited to get this in hand. I'm going to try to ship this out as soon as I can. Um, but we are leaving for our knit weekend, so it might not happen until Monday. Uh, but yeah, so the sleeves look like they look so nice. Everything looks so even these little, like the ribbing looks nice. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm very pleased with how it came out. I would like to make one for myself eventually. It was a really pleasant make, so I'm not saying like I need time to, you know, do something else before I make it. It was a really pleasant lace work. Um, I just don't know that I have like yarn that's screaming at me to make it right now. So uh, let's talk about some details for this just before we move on. And then I'm going to give you a little digest of what I think of the actual pattern. So, um, this is the Whitmore sweater by Amy Loden, who is Taylor S studio on Instagram. There are, there's a cardigan version of this also, which I've seen a couple people making recently on Instagram and I love it's gorgeous. Also, um, it's top down lace yoke pullover. Uh, I made the size small, which is a 41.5 bus. The recommended ease is five inches. Um, I use the recommended pattern needles. So four millimeter for the body, three millimeter for the bind off or for the ribbing. Um, and then the yarn is Woolberry Fiber Co. Uh, Berry Natural, which is a 100% non-superwash 20.5 micron merino, um, which is 400 yards for hundred grams. And the their old Surrey base, uh, which is still called Berry Surrey. They're both called Berry Surrey. Um, but this one is 74% Surrey Baby Alpaca, 26% silk, um, and 328 yards for 50 grams. They're both in the color. I smell snow, which gives it just like this really divine. I mean, I know I just showed you this, but like, come on, it gives it this really, really wonderful, like watercolor aspect. If you see the yarn separately, um, the non-superwash base I have is definitely more toned down than the other I Smell Snow bases. So if you watch Ariel's podcast, which I really hope that you guys go watch her because um, she's wonderful. <laughs> and she is making something in this also. So she's making um, something in the Surrey, the Killini, her Killini test knit for paisley knits is is in the surrey held double i think um like last episode or a couple episodes ago she was wearing her birch pullover which is in um maybe i don't know if hers is in berry natural but anyway her colorway like definitely has more gray in it both 
her sorry I mean this one has some gray in it um this latest my this is what I have left over I had four skeins of surrey and I did have to crack into the last one I will also put how much like weight this is for yards because I used less than the pattern said it needed for this size um I don't know how much less so I'm gonna look but like I definitely knew I'd have to crack into this but I literally just did like an inch of ribbing in this for the body and that was that was it um but this one you can't really tell I guess it looks more gray on camera but to my eyes has more of a green look than the other series that I had so that's also why I used it last um because I did not helical knit for this one they looked close enough and I was just gonna go for it um anyway so what did I think about this pattern I thought that the lace yoke was very easy to accomplish um, it grew pretty quickly in that section and it's also like the repeats were small so I said this while I was making it I found it enjoyable for like a lace yoke it was not super complicated um it's you do re no I don't think you repeat I think you just grow like 50 rows or whatever it is because as you're going you're adding some in, in different intervals like where you would just you know make ones um you do that inside the pattern and instead of doing a decrease which you would in the other ones you don't you just let it grow one row um and you do that so that the pattern you know chart changes I didn't think it was hard to keep up with what was going on though and I do think that she has many charts in this um pattern because she does account for other sizes so it's not just like the number of repeats she actually has the um, the motif change a little bit with the bigger sizes so that it, it looks appropriate and still goes to the right depth and and um, I really appreciate that uh, as a bigger maker that I'm not just like gonna make some small tiny panel that's the same for a very you know an extra small is the same for a 5xl it is not the same um, and some of those charts are also there's a bunch of charts because you have to start at different places in the sleeve for different sizes uh yeah so i had a great time making this i thought the fabric is nice it's a little bit um the stitch gauge is like a little bit more dense than other patterns you see that are like a dk weight with a fingering plus a fluff held together um i think the original was actually written for a mohair and i think this is the perfect candidate for a surrey sweater though because you don't lose a lot of that definition because it's such a wide motif um and the surrey just like feels amazing and because the stitch count is already a little bit dense like you might have to go down a needle size but it you you'll fill it out like it'll just feel like extra squishy with the surrey so i really enjoyed it and i think this is definitely a make again for me pattern and I'm glad I'm gifting it. And so I also have thought about this that I will likely make myself <laughs> a dark, win like a winter color palette. Like a, I really think this would be gorgeous and navy, um, but something. And then Sarah, who is my other other half, both like she's blonde and we're there. We have a lot of differences. We're opposites in a lot of ways, um, and still have been friends for over half our lives um well over half our lives at this point and uh yeah so she would get this nice light version okay this very dark version um okay moving on second finished object is can you believe it I finished it before the the knit trip which is what my goal was um Ariel is done hers too spoiler alert for anybody that watches she did finish in time we are going to take pictures this weekend um maybe we'll film a little content I cannot I, I you, one does not know how knit weekend will go um but we will definitely take some pictures and we'll take some pictures with Sylvan who finished hers and if you don't follow Sylvan on Instagram she has like the most gorgeous makes always um she has a definite color palette <laughs> but uh she did hers with a different neckline so all three of us will have different necklines um and very different colors and very different fits for the same pattern total preference here so uh you'll get to see what we choices we made once they're on I'm not going to try this one on even though I can um because I don't want to spoil the pictures and I'll probably wear it next episode so we can talk about it a little bit more then as well with the fit but I did finish my friendship pullover it's gorgeous I love it I do really like the fit um can you see is it gonna zoom oh yeah now that's nice okay 
it is covered in dog hair right now I apologize but I have a dog and she sheds everywhere and I knit you know with her next to me um this particular yarn it's like it just sucked in all her hair so before we take pictures I'm going to a not be in a place where she is roll this with a little lint roller though I don't want to take <clears throat> if you use those really sticky lint rollers on like superwash merino you can distort a little bit like it'll pull the fiber so I'll also go through here with like scotch tape maybe and just like bloop through and get some of these but like when you're knitting and you have a dog sometimes those fibers the you know those hairs weave right in while you're knitting so I'm gonna have to just like go and pick these out um only because she's also a white dog and you can really see it but I'm absolutely in love with how it turned out so this is the friendship pullover by Amy Schur I made a size five which is uh 50.25 inches I didn't do measurements for this either likely that's right because I tried it on last night after it was fully dry and I do a, a little bit of ease um it's a recommended recommended four inches of ease uh this is I did not re-explain this but as most of you have seen me make this this is a bottom-up cable front panel uh compound raglan um sweater so bottom-up raglan was very fun doing that last part was actually super fun when you start and you join the body it's like a sock gusset that's how I had to think of it because I was like this is going to get smaller this is going to get smaller because like you were working on the body and it was fine you add in the sleeves and you're like holy cow this is a lot of stitches and then you know they they actually do decrease rather uh pretty quickly um I made this with the recommended needle size so it's a four mill four point five millimeter needles for the body three point seven five for the ribbing um and I used, obviously, my um, <laughs> my special colorway from Backloop Yarn Co. And this is her basic worsted, which is 100% superwash merino and it is um, 218 yards for 100 grams. And this is the colorway Dreamland 2.0. It's a little bit reformulated from the original. It's a little darker than the original. Um, and I love how it came out. It does look lighter outside. Like the pictures are going to, you're going to see, it's like very much a teal sweater. Um, and these like fun little pops of the bright teal are so great. I'm, I'm in love. It's great. Um, the fit is nice. Um, well, before I washed it, it was pretty cropped and pretty small. Um, I did make this two pattern. I did not make any modifications in like length, even though I was a little bit nervous other than the sleeves. I did add an inch and a half or so to sleeves. They did grow a tiny bit during blocking and now they've, they sit a, like, you know, they're a little bit bunched around my, um, upper wrist, but I'm good with that. I was nervous that they would be too short and I didn't want to yank on them. Like I didn't, I wanted the gauge to look the same. If you really play with that and, and yank and yank while you, um, are blocking you can I mean it, you can tell very minimally uh but like that the, the gauge is not exactly the same uh and so I just really when I washed it um I soaked it for a while so that the fibers would be a little bit pliable and I thought my cabling looked really good and consistent already like my I didn't have a lot of pulled stitches so I didn't like go in and play with any of that when I blocked it I just laid that flat and I didn't try to mess with the body too much this way but I did make sure that it like had the length that it needed that it you know it was not necessarily didn't need to be wider it just needed to be a little bit longer um and I did not pin it f for the most part so uh, this is actually fun as a tip for what I use I have an OXO it's a foldable sweater drying rack it's a little mesh thing um I got it on Amazon it's not that expensive worth it to me because I dry so many sweaters um and when I'm not blocking to measurements for a test knit, which it depends on the test knit. Some test knits, I still really only use that drying thing. If I think I'm pretty close, then I won't pull to measurement. What I'll do is I'll par dry it, <laughs> which is what I did in this case. So I let it, laid it on the drying rack because it is very wet and rainy here in the Pacific Northwest. My house is not that humid but it just takes things a little bit longer to dry, even with like the heat on and stuff in the house. So our upstairs is warmer. So I had it upstairs on the drying mat and I par dried it. So it was 
damp still, but not wet when I moved it to the blocking mats. And then I did make sure that I, I had like a little bit more length, you know, I pulled the front and also because I put bust starts, the front is longer than the back, like in actuality. So, cause it's, cl it's closer fitting. So it will like actually like sit over my boobs. Um, because I did that, I just wanted to make sure I had like the ribbing looked even. And so I did pin it for a couple of hours, but then I did the final part of the drive back on the mat. Also, I needed that little drying, um, mesh thing for the Whitmore because I washed them like less than 24 hours apart. Um, there you go. That's how I dry things. Kind of crazy town, but it, it works for me. I don't, I know you can get some of these like mesh things that are stackable. Um, I'm not usually washing a lot of sweaters at once, especially because I hand wash all of these. And like that takes time. You got to soak them in your sink. And these are like, I do have one big utility sink in the house, but I tend to like do it where there's better light in, in one of the bathrooms in the house. And then I just soak them in there for a little bit. And then I roll and do all of the drying right in the bathroom with like the floor that that can be wet and stuff and then um new trick is that we have a dehumidifier that's actually kind of heavy duty um and the bathroom is the smallest room if the heat is on in the house it gets pretty toasty in there if I close the door so I did the Whitmore in like a speed dry by closing the bathroom door with the dehumidifier on and the heat was on so many things you didn't need to know about my drying process but I think it's kind of a frustration you're like why is this taking so long? Or like, what can I do to speed this up? That's what I did. Um, you gotta work with what you have, right? So let's talk about whips. I feel like that was a long time talking about all these other things. We're gonna kind of fly through whips because there's progress. Um, but we've seen a lot of these things though. There are so many. Um, there's still so many whips. So <clears throat> let's go with deadlines first. As usual, we're gonna start with the Ashling again. And it has grown a tiny bit, but I did something fun, AKA I split. Um, that was like a really f important part to get to uh, for me, just like mentally. <laughs> this, uh, as a reminder, is my Ashling sweater by Maddie Mo, who is Momoro1 on Instagram. Um, this is a test and the test is due November 12th. I'm in a good place. I've got a month from today. Uh, I will be fine. That will, it will get done. Um, and before, before the test deadline too. Uh, I think having split for sleeves, I did the armhole shaping already, and then I will do some rows and then I will do the shoulder shaping, like the neckline. This is the, this is the back. So you start with the back, just like how you end up. Um, and then I will go to the front and the front will have like very similar armhole shaping and the neck shaping will be slightly more dramatic. So also that's kind of fun because there's less stitches. Um, I do have to pay more attention to this. So I sat and did like an hour, just, just getting all these like 15 rows done. Still a lot of stitches. Uh, so as a reminder, what am I doing? Um, details here, details, which guys, by the way, I don't know if anyone wa watched last week's episode or whoever did. I like just didn't talk about any of the details for like any of the whips. As I told you, it was really early that morning. I got myself a little more together today before I started so that I would like um, talk through the details. I also changed how I did my notes. Not that you guys care about this, but I, did, I do have to prep for these. I have to bring everything downstairs. I have to write out notes so I know what I'm talking about. I changed how I did them and I just didn't do a good job of reading through them. The notes are good though they're done better. So they will help guide us, um, this week. So this is, uh, a bottom up split hem, uh, with like a high low hem. So the, the back hem is a little bit longer, uh, drop shoulder sweater made with one strand of Surrey throughout. So I am doing the size five and it is a 48 inch bust. The recommended ease is positive three to positive eight inches. I am doing slightly less than that. That's my choice. Um, and Maddie is good with that, that choice for me. Um, partly because of like my upper bust measurements and also just like how it's going to fit and how drapey it's going to be. I'm very excited to have something a little bit closer fitting for that. Um, I am using 3.5 millimeter needles for the body and 3.25 for the ribbing, which is what was recommended. Uh, and I am using again, back loop yarn co in her lace Surrey, which is 74% Surrey baby out. 
baby Surrey alpaca, you guys, every time. Um, 26% soak, 328 yards for 50 grams in a custom colorway, which we'll call Periwinkle. It is, um, it's going along really well. Uh, she uses also the very popular sloped bind off, which I think is like very common for bottom up things um, to get a slope. Um, you don't have row like little stairs of your bound off stitches. Um, it's not a very hard method to use and I think it, it produces a nice result. And um, I believe part of the point of it is also makes it easier for you to pick up stitches because those slopes are like from one row below. Like it's a longer slope and it's just like they're easier to see. Um, What else? It's what... I think it's the same. I think we used a slope bind off for the high time top also around the armholes. Um, it is also what is in the oolong tank for the bound off um, armhole stitches. I am, um, yeah. Okay, so those were the details. I'm really excited about this. I think the progress is great. Um, yeah, so the back has that long hem. The front has this shorter hem. Oh, my progress keeper is this little doodad here. I actually was a lot closer to the inches I needed. So I think in my brain, it was 13.5 inches. Confirmation, neither of the two things I said last week. And I think I was at like 13 inches when I did the podcast and before, you know, last week. And I, I wasn't really paying attention, honestly, you guys. Too many projects and this one was not the highest priority. But now I went through the pattern all the rest of the way, did all my highlights um in the pdf and i know what i'm doing for the rest of this uh and yeah so in the back from the back like that's not where i was last week but this is like she does tell you your tip is to um help tr keep track is to put in a marker at your very like the row before your first row and then you count is part of the ways so you do measure also but like you can count um if you're on gauge, your number of rows to help you keep on track for your going back and forth part. So very excited um, for progress and to get some more done. Maybe I, I, we were talking about how many projects everyone's gonna bring to knit weekend. Um, I will talk about this more at the end, but not the project count because you guys don't care. Um, but I will obviously be bringing probably all the things I'm working on only because I have a very short so I don't have a short attention span I have the long attention span that's why I knit so much but I do like the variety and also I feel like my hands like the variety so like this now I'm gonna be knitting back and forth also my cardigan is back and forth also the oolong is back and forth I need to get some of those done so I can just get them done um but like I'll need a difference in fabric in like in the yarn choice. Like it's very different knitting for two hours with Surrey than it is with a worsted weight yarn for the leaf. So I'm going to need the variety. Um, but I do need to make progress on it. So I'm going to bring it this weekend because that's when I get a lot of my knitting done. Okay. The next one we're going to talk about is the oolong. So like I said, I'm knitting back and forth in that one. Um, last time I had just one side, um, front done. Now I have two. I feel like I'm living on the edge here. I do not have any stitch stoppers on this one. Uh, and for some reason, even though I only have one ball of yarn connected right now, I feel like this is crazy town. I am like constantly getting a little bit tangled. Um, I have the other ball wound. I will have to bring it. Uh, at the very least, I will need to break into it for edgings. Uh, it got me a really long way though, the, the single ball that I've used. I completed the second side, which I think is this side, um, the left side, uh, this week, over the weekend. This is not my size, as you guys can tell. This is a sample knit. This is a sample knit for, um, which is so interesting also to think about how this will be. Obviously, it'll sit different when there's a back on it. But I do, like, I'd have, I want to look at the measurements. Because I would need, like, obviously this is part of 
sizing um more chest measurement though but also I think I need that like more than some people I have a very long like between shoulder and the middle of my chest line naturally um and so I would want to make sure like the repeats match but because you can just grow your chart at the end as long as you want like as long as I like where the v is sitting I can just make these longer the strap part um that is there's actually like no reason you couldn't you could just uh you could do your your um like shaping your armhole and neck hole shaping to give you that v you decrease some of these stitches you also decrease some of your um your do sloped edging for the side you could just do that in a more elongated fashion right a couple more rows between so i imagine that's what she does for the other sizes but i don't know i didn't read for other sizes uh anyway this is so cute so as a reminder this is the oolong tank by Amy Sure, who is Amy Sure makes on Instagram um, and YouTube. I don't know if she like does much on her YouTube channel, but I did see she has a YouTube channel. Um, this is a bottom up lace front panel V-neck tank top. It is a sample knit for Horizon Fibers. Um, Paisley put out like seven sample knits and they're all due in November. And I got picked to do this one. I am so excited because I did really want to make this pattern even though I was very unsure if I would ever wear it. So it's kind of a fun time to make it. There I have a couple of friends that I would actually make this for because it's not a ton of knitting um, and they would put it in their wardrobe. <laughs> uh, so it's, yes, let's do some details. It's a size three. There's no bust shaping. Um, it's a 39.25 inch bust. The recommended ease is one to two inches in your upper bust and um, Amy sure just put out a podcast episode. Maybe it was a podcast. No, I think it's just on Instagram. Maybe it was a podcast episode. But anyway, she she put together a short thing where she puts all of her reasoning around doing your measurements at your upper chest measurement, not your full bust measurement. It's interesting. She put a lot of information in there. Go watch it yourself. Um, I'm not, I won't like digest it for you because there's a lot of information <laughs> and I'm not going to regurgitate. She did the work, go watch hers. Um, but it is interesting and that's how a lot of her pattern had like, um, I have, so I did that and I did the left hand side. I also picked up the back and I've made some pretty good progress. Like I think I started the back here. So I've, you know, done an inch or so it's really like you do a couple of, um, sloped bind off stitches also to, to match the front and then you're really just knitting flat back and forth until the top uh and then I'll do some neck shaping like a little bit of neck shaping and I'm excited with the progress I will bring this this weekend because I would like to get most of it done um yeah just so it's done it is not due until the very end of November, so it's not like I'm on a rush for this one, but it's a little project. I've been working on it for several weeks now, and I would just like for it to be out of my queue. Um, I need to wash it, I need to dry it, and then I need to ship it to Canada. And all of those things take time. So, next on the list is the Phaedra. So this is another sample knit, and this sample knit is for Backloop Yarn Co. Erin also put out a sample, like I at least one other watcher here is uh, making a sample. She let me know. Um, and that is so exciting. And it's such, I love making samples. I know some people don't. I have enough in my queue that I'd never have to make a sample and I would never run out of projects. <laughs> but um, it does allow me to test different patterns out uh, that I maybe wouldn't make for myself. And then maybe I will, like maybe that would change my mind. I also you get to try other yarns even like I've made I've made things in all of Erin's yarn weights I think at this point <laughs> that's probably true in many of her yarns um but you know like I have not made something uh Surrey and Fingering held together with any of you know um with any of her yarns yet uh I've held them separately but yeah so it's just like a, it's a nice way to see um how yarns play from different dyers uh this is um 
also a pattern I don't think I would have gravitated to, but I kind of like it. Uh, we'll see if I make one for myself ever, but I really do enjoy it. So this is the Phaedra by Audrey Borrego, who is Yarn Flakes on Instagram and YouTube. Um, this sample is due November 17th. So I have like a little bit more pressure to get this done. I've got five weeks, uh, but I just have to get this to North Carolina. Shipping should be fast and I will be able to do it. Uh, it is a this one has the longest description. Bottom up, cable and bobble front, split hem, drop shoulder sweater with an all over dot motif. Do you guys like that explanation? <laughs> it's very long. Um, but it is a size two. It's it's pretty roomy. Um, it's got a recommended ease of 7.75. This is a finished bust of 43.25. Um, this is, uh, like I said, Back Loop Yarn Co. Basic Sock and Surrey Lace in the color Ghouls, which is part of her Burr collection, which is out right now. It's all the Burr months, September to December. Um, it is 80%. So the Basic Sock is 80% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. This is also a two-ply, um, you know, that's a pretty normal for that weight. Uh, and the Surrey lace is 74% Surrey alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards. The same thing I'm using for my um, Ashling, except for in this beautiful gray blue color. It looks, oh, I think it looks a little more blue in real life. It's picking up pretty gray there. I will show you. I'm in an awkward spot because I always end sort of like just around the chart. Uh, this is my front so far. Um, do I have a progress keeper on here? I thought I did. I guess I don't have one. Sorry. Um, the last time though, I had just finished the first chart, which is like right here somewhere, like right here. So I've done about a little bit over three quarters of the chart again. Um, I grew up by about two and a half or three inches and it needs to be like you just do this for like 11 inches or something. So after you join hems, it's like from the front hem, you need 11 inches. It's not bad. The chart is fun. Uh, we talked about these bobbles that are sort of like a crochet bobble. You can now really see them poking out. Um, they look very fun. It's kind of like a twiggy branch look over here. And then this is like a more traditional cable sort of panel, though this is accomplished with all right twist, left twist, knit through the back loop stitches, and then, um, like one cable, one true cable stitch. And yeah, it's so nice. The fabric feels amazing. It, I mean, it feels like the Whitmore, uh, but like with this, with all of this pearl stitches in here and this, like, I think this is going to block out super nicely. Um, yeah, it just doesn't feel super dense. Like it doesn't feel very heavy yet. This is also just the bottom and it's a little size. So that's where I am with that. That's definitely going to come with me this weekend because I can do this chart. Um, hanging out with people. It's not so bad. I do it on my iPad. Um, I don't have my little chart marker right now. I should put, put one on there. I had one on there. Um, in case anyone's wondering, I have an iPad. So how I typically do patterns is I download them, um, from Ravelry and put them in my books app. And I, use like the highlighting tool, like the little like editing, you can, you can edit on PDFs in there. And I just go through and I like highlight across rows because even with my little row counter thing, which is helpful because there is like a certain row, it's like every seven rows or something, you do that dot motif. And I have to know that I'm doing that before I look at the chart again. So it's a good, it, that's why I had it on there. But, um, I can't keep track of charts like, oh, okay, it's row eight. And I just like read across row eight without marking off. My eye will wander. It's way harder to keep track of. And this one is not as intuitive because there's those crisscrosses. You've got things growing in different directions. You've got like the, the twiggy before the bobbles is like pretty much the same every time, but you have to like keep track of where you are in that. So um, that's what I do. This is an episode full of tips. All right. Uh, let's go through. Another one that has had a lot of progress this week. 
Um, so this is my superlative. This is a new release pattern from Samantha Guerin, who is Samantha Guerin Designs on Instagram. Um, this, hold on, let me figure out where I'm holding. Okay, so this is a top-down drop shoulder, um, relaxed fit boucle pattern. It's made for boucle yarn. Not that you can't just like substitute boucle and for DK weight things. It may be harder for you to get gauge because boucle is like naturally floofy. So you have to like look at what the gauge is and what's reasonable for you to get. It's also hard to gauge swatch for boucle to say. Um, this is a size five. It's 40. Oh, wait, hold. I told you last week it was a size five. That's what I was making. I lied. I am not doing that size. Um, not at all because I decided, so I do think I'm a little, maybe a tiny bit off gauge, but I have exactly four skeins of boucle. I decided I would rather like this make be more sweatshirt feeling. My very favorite sweatshirt. I think I might actually show you guys because I want to show you Portuguese purling and I, this is not a great sweater to put a pin in. Um, but my favorite sweater has like a pretty, I measured it and I was like, oh, that is like a good like sweatshirt. It's a sweatshirt. That fit is actually pretty boxy. Um, and this will have a lot of drapes. So uh, the size six is the maximum you can get out of four skeins. And I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> The size six is a 52 inch bust and the recommended ease for the pattern is four to eight inches. So that's, what is that? Five inches for me. So that's perfectly within range. Um, I'm using the recommended needle size, 3.75 millimeter needles, 3.25 for the ribbing, which I haven't gotten to any of that yet. I am going to be using um, the same color for ribbing though. Uh, you can use complementary. you can use totally drastic changes. The pattern itself is like written for stripes. I'm not doing any stripes. Um, uh, I'm taking my inspiration from Tori Knits who did like an all green, also Explorer Knits, uh, boucle version of this. And that's what I'm doing. So this is to the stars who listen. That's also the color for the collar cuffs and hem. Um, this is the, her boucle decle. So, so sorry, this is Explore Knits and Fibers, and this is her boucle decle. It's 100% superwash merino in 240 yards per 100 grams. The DK I have to go with it is Rocky's DK, which is 274 yards per 100 grams, also 100% superwash merino. I made the entire, um, finish the back, which I was like not super far. I think last episode I had just like cast on really. So I made the whole back. I did the front pickups, which actually was not as terrible as I thought. Um, I had a pretty easy time reading the stitches. I think I did, someone had given me the tip of like, look at it in natural light, like through a window, because you can really then see more of your gaps. I think the way this boucle is, maybe it's just this color too. I can see the thread that goes through. So there's like a very, like a lace weight thread that then like the I always use the word bloop, but like the little um, curly parts of the boucle are sitting on and I could read that. Like I can see where that is and where it kind of makes the V's so I could figure out how many and counted. I just counted across. I picked them up at the same exact time though and put one on hold with a separate ball of yarn and worked one side, the side I was supposed to start with, because I wanted to make sure like when I did that, I was like very consistently counting the same way. And one day to the next, you can do some strange things, my friends. <laughs> so I literally did it within like five minutes. I was like, okay, one, okay, the other. Um, yeah. And so I've joined the body. Um, they're not super deep armholes. It's like, uh, I mean, it's going to be enough room for my meaty upper arms, but it will, um, you know, it's not, too, they're not huge sleeves. And I plan to just take this one. This is a perfect knitting project for this weekend to just knit, 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 knit. I would like to show you also the bag that this was in, which is some, you know, it's an acquisition to me. Um, it was a gift from Katie and my knit group because she was gone for a wedding a few weeks ago and I watched her cat, Gina. And she, luckily she lives super close to me and Gina is a very nice cat. And I just went over there and hung out for a little bit. Um, and this... <laughs> It says lay flat to dry on the bottom and it's just like this hilarious little sheep <laughs> laying. I find that amusing. She knew I would. It was a very good pick for me. Thanks, Katie. Um, okay, 
So let's talk through the Leith, which does not have that much progress. Um, so this one should be short. Uh, this is a Leith cardigan by Rebecca Clow, who is the Craya Bea on YouTube and Instagram. Um, this is a cardigan. You guys, I stopped mid-row. I think I stopped this during knit night, and Lord knows why I didn't just pick it back up. But um, this is a bottom-up drop shoulder v-neck uh, v cardigan with a sewn on button band. I say that because there's a lot of constructions now where the button band is done simultaneously in various ways, you know, but this one is just totally done separately and sewn on. I think some of the testers did do one of those other methods. Um, and I think like even the applied where you like pick up and knit a double band as you go around like after the cardigan is done I think like if I, I watched the YouTube her YouTube channel when she was talking about it and she didn't like how that laid so she just did a sewn on I don't mind you're I'm gonna block the whole thing first and then I will add it and I don't really care about sewing on um something that I feel like is enough value right so if you guys remember this is an intarsia striped um cardigan so you do little intarsia lines in the back I am doing a 12 row stripe. That's what I sort of like was looking at a lot of people's patterns and I, I counted. Um, a lot of people didn't write what their stripe is and that's there's not actually a recommendation in the pattern because it sort of depends on the size you're making and some other things. But I think overall that's what people were doing and so that's what I wanted to do because I really like that depth um, that shows up on the front. So uh, yeah, I think, I think I added like five rows. Um, so this is where I am. I will continue to go, go, go. Um, I do want to make progress on this this weekend for sure because we are not far off from our next cardigan cast on, which again, I'm going to have to make flat and I, I just can't do forever and ever. Um, really fast, the details on that are, it's a size five. It's a 49.35 0.25 um bust recommended ease is one to one to four inches so that's a great size for me um it's a four i'm using recommended needles four millimeters for the body 3.75 for the ribbing it is made with worsted weight um sorella classic worsted in three colors this is pat Morse kitchen which is the speckly color um main color magic which is the pinky purple color and the warm glow which is this kind of almost this color um and they are all 100% superwash merino, 218 yards for 100 grams. I, um, it's just, I had a lot of other things going on this week and this is not the priority, but I do need to get it back in the priority queue. Um, let's move right into the very last one. I have one new cast on this week. I really thought I'd have more having cast off these sweaters, but then I realized I still have so many sweaters on my needles. So I just wanted to make some more progress on those. Um, and I also, you guys, sorry, my chair is like so creaky for my office. I really need to get a new one. It's, it's the creakiest chair. Um, but I have a new sample knit. Uh, this is a very small sample knit and not something anyone should be worried about. Um, and then I have another thing to talk about. But the sample knit is the one I cast on. And this is um, another Manhattan hat. This is in the beginning stages, but it's very cute. Um, this is the Manhattan Hat by Tori Yu, who is Tori Nets NYC on Instagram. Um, this is the bottom up one by one rib classic styled beanie. Um, the thing that is like most notable in the pattern, it has like a decrease line that allows it to have like kind of a flat little thing at the top um it's the style it's very cool I just made two of these so when um I'm making the sample for sh for La Mercerie and when La Mercerie reached out because I've done sample knitting for them before and they had some fall makes they wanted I think generally they wanted to like save on shipping and like do local makers and so when they reached out uh both Sylvan and I actually are doing sample knits for them and I said I was open to whatever um and she asked if I could do a Manhattan hat and I said of course I can, because I love a Manhattan hat. <laughs> I'm going to make so many of these. Um, so she asked me to do, I'm doing the adult size large with a single fold. Part of that reason is because I got one skein and it's not even a full skein. So there's no way I can make a double broom with this one um, in this size. 
And I am using something they carry in a store, which is um, Cory Confetti, which is like the confetti version of Cory Worsted from La Bienname. And this is 50% Falcon Corydale, 30% natural recycled fibers, and 20% La Bienname recycled threads. Um, that's how they get like the little bloops. Uh, <laughs> I'll use that word forever. It's 250 yards for 100 grams. It is a non super wash base. Um, it feels incredible. It's super soft and it's got the most fun confetti ever. This is in the rainbow or the color gray bow. Rainbow gray. Um, look how fun it is. Gosh, it's so fun. It is really, really, um, fun to work with those little poofs just make it like as you're going through every row I mean if you can look at this yarn like there's bits that are just gray but even if you look at the gray like there's pink in there there's a little bit of yellow like those aren't even real true like confetti pieces and then you get to some of these where it's got like a true kind of like um nep you know or whatever they're called neep I don't know um but they're just twisted through with like these these bigger um little confetti pieces so I am really excited to make this and it should be done very fast I have until November 17th but I will likely be done with it this weekend um if not like the middle of next week so you should see a finished one next episode um two more things before I go back to this because I'm going to talk about ribbing so I got into two test stands I think I told you guys I applied I didn't actually think I would get into one of them. And then I was kind of very much hoping to get into the other. Um, I'm excited for both of these for sure. So the first test I got into was the Daft Day Shawl. I've applied for like six. This is also the cray bit, Rebecca Clow. I've applied for like six test nets and haven't gotten into any of them. So I just didn't think I'd get into this because this is also a very small pool. It was only like 15 people or something that are testing this rather than or maybe even less than that because it's only one size. So she only needed a few people to do it. And she just wants, I think she wanted people who would use different types of yarn. And also, um, we put in what we would theoretically do. She said, she's okay with us changing. I put in a couple of suggestions. So, um, I'll pop a picture up here, but this is the shawl counterpart to her daft days cardigan, which I did not apply for because, you know, deep into the cardigan land, I didn't want to add another one to my plate. Um, this is a triangle shaped shawl that is uh got slip stitch pattern um and increases at both the center and edges so it's like an equally growing triangle shawl i'm really excited for this because it is going to use up some stash things i have i just don't know what yet so she put out some suggestions like she made hers with a, a main color and three i think i'll pop a picture um three different stripe colors this could be made for an advent though. And so you could use, and I think she put 24 stripes in though I, in her podcast episode last week or whenever she posted, she did say that like, she would have liked the length to be a, even a little bit bigger. And so she would have added a couple more stripes, but she wanted to make it so that the pattern can be made exactly for 24 stripe, um, 24 minis from an advent because it is going out as an advent pattern. I will, I I have enough, advent minis from a stash I bought from somebody who had an advent that I could do this um I also have this amazing fade pack from treehouse knits that is not really sweater colors for me um they're very watercolory and they go from like blue gray to orange but they're really fun and I was kind of thinking I might make this and then also give this to my mother I'm already making her a cardigan this year or between this year and next year whenever I get the yarn um and that, she's not like the most shawl person but it's cold in the downstairs of her house and that's where her bedroom is uh so I think she would appreciate to have something else warm to knit or you know to to wear around um I will maybe I'll pop up a picture I think if I can find it Rebecca like definitely put a picture up of her swatch at some point that had like the faded colors rather than having a main color that's what I would do if I use those we shall see. I'm going to think about it a little bit this weekend. Um, and I'm going to probably bring these colors with me, have the girls look at them and then we'll just like decide <laughs> and I'll start making it this weekend. Um, the other one I got into was the one I, I like have been following along with the make and I'm like obsessed, obsessed, 
with this idea. Um, it is the duo tone and this, I will pop up a picture, uh, is a Rachel Costello design. Um, she is Rachel Costello knitwear. She's also a newer designer. She doesn't have that many patterns out, has been designing for about a year. Um, the test is going to be due December 16th. I think we have an extended timeline if needed through January. Um, I will hope to get it done actually. So December 16th is right before my birthday. I'm the 19th. And so this could be like a really fun birthday sweater for me. We shall see. That's also pretty close to the holidays. And if I decide I need any like holiday decor made or any gifts, then I might need that extended timeline. Um, but it should be a pretty quick make. So it is a drop shoulder crew neck pullover. Um, it's a fingering plus fluff you do need to use fingering plus fluff or a lace, a lace weight yarn, um, because of the way that it's constructed. So it has piping details in the, on the front and the back, I think, and then on the sleeves and the collar and the hem and the cuffs are all made with just the fingering yarn. Maybe held double, maybe held single. I'm not sure. We don't have the pattern yet. Uh, we just got put into the test where we are picking colors. And then, um, but those are all just the fingering. So like that pops out, but then the surrey or the mohair that you hold with it is like really changing the color. And it's called duotones because you're supposed, not supposed to be, you can do whatever you want, obviously. Um, but like her, the, her original design is like contrasting colors or two like, um, yeah, different colors in tonals held together so that like it you'll see the picture it looks like super fun and then those are really those piping details really pop out i don't know what i'm going to use um this is a design in collaboration with zz textiles which i'm going to talk about her in a second too when we talk about acquisitions i don't have an acquisition from her but i'm going to talk about it um buying yarn okay uh but she so when she does collabs like this we'll get a test or discount and so do I need more yarn absolutely not do I maybe want yarn from her tonals for this that is the question I have some options I could use from stash one of which would be this mohair this blue mohair here held with like a bright pink yarn, a baby pink yarn, um, which I think would be okay because those are not colors I would, well, the baby pink yarn, especially, I don't think I would, I would not make for a sweater for me. Um, but using those with this, like it's mostly going to be a blue sweater and that like lighter pink edging won't be so terrible. Like still not maybe something I'd, it's like maybe a little too close to skin color. Anyway, Rachel, who runs easy textiles has the most beautiful most beautiful tonals and i like just maybe want more per yarn plus i could totally do this with mohair i have this mohair that's the only color i have enough of i think i do have enough i think of the the curries is taking a, i already have a project picked for this i have a project picked for this pink too so i'm hesitant to use it because i really want the project that this is you know picked for the only other color I have enough of is this. Um, I actually might have enough, depending on how much this um, Ashling takes up, I might have enough of that periwinkle color too, but that might be a little too close right now to make one of those. I could make a, a this again with a Surrey held and maybe even for somebody else and give them the beautiful periwinkle color. So to be determined, I will let you guys know when I know. Um, Okay, let's go over the first thing I got a bunch of questions on because I told you I'm a crazy person and I was just talking about it without giving you any context. So how I do combination ribbing, I do do something called, I think it's called combination ribbing or something like that for a continental knitter to do ribbing that's a little less hard on your hands and I think is easier. This is my personal opinion. I've been doing it a lot and I really like it. I also like the results. You can see right here on this Manhattan hat. This is my knit side. You know, like this is obviously not blocked or anything. And this is my, I'll flip it part way inside out. This is my pearl side. They look pretty close. It does a really good job. So what you're doing essentially 
And I don't want to make this a really long part of this video because I there might be like YouTube tu tutorials. I haven't really ever looked because I saw one Instagram video once. I tried it and I was like, yep, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, but basically what you're doing is you are doing like a backwards and wrong way purl stitch so that it becomes a regular purl stitch, but it's easier for your hands to do. So I'm going to turn myself kind of around so you can see my hands and I'm stand here and show you. So what I do, let's see if it'll stay focused on me. Okay. So the next one is a purl stitch. So I do have to do a setup row for this. I guess this is important to talk through really fast. Um, to do, to start this, you like this one is done. I use the Andrea Maru method for um, tubular cast on. But regardless of how you start, you would just like, if you do a long tail cast on, you do your first, you can do your first row starting with this. I always do my very first row a regular ribbing. So I actually like, I do a ribbing stitch the, the regular way. What I will show you is how I purl just in general. Um, if I'm purling, I don't do like the Norwegian purl. Like I'm a continental knitter. I don't like lift up and do that like crazy twist thing. I just put my yarn in front and then I pull the yarn down with my finger, which is why ribbing bothers my hands if I am doing it. Because it, the knit action, I don't move my fingers, but my purling action, I have to like manipulate my finger a lot. You know, my, my um, pointer finger. So um, in order to set this up to do a combination, uh, knit or ribbing the very first row you do in the combination ribbing you're knitting through the regular and then you're purling just backwards and all it will do is it will um backwards being like how your yarn is caught it will just make your next purl stitch something you have to work through the back loop that will then keep all of the rest of them not twisted stitches it makes them regular purl stitches so okay you guys, I'm just doing, doing an awkward thing around the camera here, but let me just show you. So essentially what I'm doing is I am just pulling the yarn to the front like I normally do, but instead of going around, like having this finger pull the yarn around, I just leave it where it is and I pull the yarn through. But since I'm doing it the opposite way, like it is backwards, I am doing it though through the back loop and all it does is it turns your stitch so that it is flat. Like it, it just makes it so that it's the correct way. I'm going to show you again because I can't really tell what I'm looking at here. But hopefully you can see this. So you're knitting. And then you are just letting the yarn be in front. And you are swooping through the back. And that is how I wear a combination rib. Um, okay, I just filmed my hand thing, so I'm sorry if the camera's all adjusted now. Um, hopefully that clears up that question a little bit, but I did want to talk about a couple of other knitting-related things that I do. Um, because why not share some tips and tricks of things that I like to do? And then I want to talk through acquisitions. I should have done that first, but um technically that what I just showed you is an acquisition also because that's a sample knit but it's all going to go back to them um okay the other thing um that I wanted to show you is Portuguese purling I am actually going to just do it on this sweater it's fine um normally what I will say is if I'm using this is a Portuguese purling pin I get mine on Amazon because they're cheap and I lose them all the time. Um, I lose them and then I find them because I put them on sweatshirts and then I wash them <laughs> all the time. Uh, I try to be better about it. And I usually, so I have like a little notions box where I keep all of my like tiny things I use all the time. Stitch markers, um, though not my light bulb pins, pins because I have like a whole little box of those anyway. Uh, these like a measuring tape, a tiny scissors, you know, that kind of thing. So I can always travel and go. And one of these is always in there or I try to keep it back in there. So I try to be conscious of it, but I still lose them all the time. Anyway, um, a tip for this is you can use these absolutely with uh, like just put it in your bra or if you're wearing a tank top. 
I don't have a bra strap that's like good to put it on right now. And then you can, once you, once it's on, you could just pop the little pin part out and then you've got a pin that works just as well. You don't need to see like the rest of the contraption in order to use it. What does this do though? You might ask. Um, maybe you've seen other knitters use this. Some people also, when I can't find this, I just wrap my yarn around my neck. I don't prefer neck tensioning because I have a lot of hair. I prefer this, but um, let me show you what it looks like. What is it that it does? So uh, I am not an absolute expert on all of the things a Portuguese pin can do. You can knit with it, you can do, I actually used to do ribbing with a Portuguese pin more because I thought it, it makes my purl stitches much more cons consistent in size and very much closer to my knit stitches. Um, when I don't use one, I tend to have like that wonky row thing where my purl row is tighter usually and so like because I'm it, like yank the yarn <laughs> more but I've also purled a lot of ways so sometimes it's way looser but either way then you have like that little gap and it's like you have two two rows that look close to each other and one that's far away and it happens a lot and then it's not as cute um so what you do I have a, like one video of a setup for this also one or two on my Instagram if anyone's interested in more details like I could do some more reels on Instagram to show this, but um, I did actually stop in the middle of a purling row. This was not on purpose for the podcast, but that's very convenient for me. So all you do is you take your yarn, your working yarn, and um, you, like, I'm a continental knitter, right? So normally my yarn I prefer to have on my left side. For per for purling, I put it on my right side. So I do sometimes switch the bag or I just pull the yarn this way. Um, but you put from your working yarn onto your pin with then your yarn going this way so it's easy to you know you're not twisted or whatever on the pin you don't need it you don't need that tension because it already provides a lot of tension here I hold my yarn this way so I have like over over my pinky finger over my ring finger that's just enough tension for me as two fingers of tension and then I don't you know I don't I don't wrap or do anything else with it and all you do is like this is another fun one. I can actually do this one standing though. Um, is that you? Um, so yeah, you just enter like a purl stitch and you wrap your yarn. This is like an awkward angle. Normally, if I'm like more in front of myself, the yarn is at a good angle for it. But you just wrap and then you pull off. And that's how I purl. And you can see the yarn's moving. It doesn't have too much tension on it, but the pin provides a lot of tension. And that is, that is how I purl. Keeps it really consistent for me and it doesn't hurt my hand. Um, I have not found a way continental to purl that doesn't hurt my hand after doing like, you know, something flat like this. Um, Norwegian is like a lot of wrist manipulation. This is supposed to be like ergonomically a lot better for your hands. So if you want to be a long time knitter, maybe look this up, especially if purling does hurt your hands. Um, it's made things like less daunting, flat lay things, whatever, because I'm like, oh, I like to purl. I actually love my pin so much. Um, I pull it out like all the time and yeah, it is nice. You can absolutely knit this way too, but I don't prefer to knit this way because it's actually like, it's the harder stitch to do with a pin. It's easier to purl with a pin than knit. Interesting. Um, and yes, so that is something that this is like my not secret this is my my favorite things like favorite knit knit things um then I also I don't have that many other like knit tips and tricks like things that I really love to do um but that's you know those are two things that I think like maybe not everybody does or knows about um and there are two things I really love oh the other thing that I really love is I love um a color work thimble if I am doing so it's uh I'm pretty sure these are called Norwegian thimbles and so this is what I use for color work especially if I'm just doing two colors um so it's like a little doodad there are different styles of this slightly um it's like the angle of this and like how you load your yarn these are really cheap from Amazon and they work fine I I didn't like find that I needed something else special um but I really enjoy these. So you put your yarn in here and you 
um, it helps keep your yarn separate and then you can still tension your normal way. I have never figured out how people can like hold them just separately on their finger to pick up and I don't like to do the you do one color on each side. It's not my preference. I like the tensioning in this a lot better. Um, and I actually tend to knit color work inside out. So knit normally. I have also Portuguese pearled an entire color work that keeps your color work super, super even because you just do it inside out. You purl the whole thing instead of knitting. If I want like a really process knit, that's what I'll do. I did it for a couple hats. I did it for a cow last year and it was like very enjoyable. Um, but I just use this otherwise to knit. Um, if I Portuguese pearl color work, by the way, I need to wear two pins and you just put your color on either side. And so you still do color dominance. You just do it opposite because you're doing it inside out. Um, but if I do it on this way, you just always have your, um, dominant color in your left, your background color in your, on the right hand side. Um, or top and bottom right and that also is it, it's like a way easier way for me to keep track of what is supposed to be going on um and I yeah this is the other thing that I really love like these two tiny tools that don't cost very much money are like the two things that save my hands and my brain okay um those are all for tips and tricks for this week um let's talk acquisitions and then let's talk about the spinning class um so first First acquisition, actually, I'm going to talk through is the big one. It's a big old box here. Um, no, this whole box is not full of yarn. Um, but uh, a woolly knit yarn has yarn to cone. So it's coned yarn. Um, and we are doing this cardigan knit, which I keep like teasing, but not saying what it is. It's going to be the Calm Down Cardigan by Lily Kate Makes. And... Um, we're doing with another knit group here on the West Coast. Uh, and it's just like very fun. Just two groups of friends knitting <laughs> the same thing at the same time. Um, it is a lot of yarn for this thing though. And so I was like trying to look for an economical thing. One of the gals already made her first one in this yarn. She had a discount code and also Wooly Knit just bumped down some of their international ship shipping. It is very expensive to ship this yarn. Do not get me wrong. Shipping is additional. You can't like, it's not free shipping for anything. Um, but it's still a screaming deal. I think all in um, with exchange rate and the 20% off, every yarn was like, including shipping, because I just divided it among all the cones, like how much shipping totally was divided by the cones. Um, and all in, they're like 35 bucks for a cone. And it's 500 grams of yarn. It's 2,500 yards. It is light fingering. It's 514 yards per 100 grams. So this is not necessarily like going to work for all fingering projects, but it definitely works for things that you hold double, like with, especially if you're using like a 328 Surrey, that'll give you almost exactly like what you would need for gauge with a mohair and a regular fingering. Okay. If you hold it double, it's like 250 plus, 257 something like yards per 100 grams, which is also like a perfect DK weight yarn. Um, when sometimes, especially if like you're doing European patterns, they tend to have more DK options that are lighter DKs, not as many, or, you know, like the mid range, not as many 230, right? It's like 240, 250. That's what a lot of DK weight patterns are. So this will get you that. So I got a couple of colors because it was cheap and the economies of scale for shipping made sense for me to get a few. So um, this is what I'm going to use. This color is called Bias. Um, it is such a gorgeous, like, I don't even know, berry, berry color. Um, and I am going to, all of these yarns are their merino wool base. They do have a British wool base also. I talked to Sharon about that and she said British wool she would use for like a jacket, um, something that you wouldn't wear next to skin because it's a little, little bit scratchier. It does really soften up, I hear, but, eh, you know, I want it to go softer. So these are 100% merino, and I am, and this is a four-ply, um, light fingering, right? So I am going to make this, I have two of these for, for my Calm Down Cardigan. I have this planned for a project as well, um, for me, and I'm going to get some mohair to hold with that. This gorgeous color um that was kalina gray by the way this is called pinot green 
FP No Green. Yeah, and this is um, going to be actually a sweater for Mike. I'm going to make him the stick season when it comes out, so it'll be sort of like a Christmas present to him, though I'm sure it will not be done for Christmas. Um, and then I got this color, which is called Amazon Green. And I really love, it's, it's a beautiful teal. Um, okay, so all of those cones were very affordable. Now, for this cone, I knew I wanted to make the foxberry. And the foxberry is made, I think, with mohair, but a light fingering. Maybe it's made with Surrey. Anyway, it is a light finger. This is almost exactly, you know, the weight I would need. I was going to do this with a drops mohair and just, just get, like, an order sometime in the winter, maybe, like, a winter sale month, and then um, get a couple of sweater quantities of the mohair because I enjoyed working with it. But I was at La Mercerie, and... I was looking around and I realized we had this conversation the other week where I said, I don't think there's a commercial um, Surrey lace that is like the right requirements that could be a replacement for a hand dyed Surrey. I'm going to eat my words because I found one. This is called Cumulus by Fiber Spates. It is not on the Shop of Mercery's website. So like, don't look there. You won't find it. It's, I think, only available in store. Maybe you could call for an order, but um, it's gorgeous. This teal color, this color is called teal. Um, and it is 74% baby Surrey alpaca, 26% mulberry silk. Does that sound very familiar to everybody? It is 164 yards for 25 grams, which makes it 328 for 50 grams. So it is an equivalent to, you know, any of the series I'm using right now. Um, it's super soft. It's gorgeous. They have very pretty colors, only tonals. So it's not a replacement for like hand dyed, you know, anyway, but it is definitely a good replacement. The price point on this, I, I did find this online somewhere too. And they, they had it listed at like 875 at the mercury. It was 10 bucks. Um, something around that. Right. And it is, I mean, it was convenient because I got to see them live. And I think sometimes these things, especially with like the shiny silk color, it's hard to tell live. Um, I did not open my cone. I was going to actually open the cone because I got this last Friday. I was going to open the box. I was going to take a cutting and I was going to take it over and see if they had anything because I did notice this yarn, but I wasn't sure if it was like, if it would work. It is not exactly the same shade for sure, but it's complementary enough. It's got like, especially the silk part of the cumulus has enough of this like greeny tone in it that it's going to be lovely and perfect for this sweater. So that's going to be my Foxberry. And I got enough yarn to make it. That's, that was one other acquisition. I bought that when I was at La Mercerie on Saturday. What else did I buy at La Mercerie? Obviously a couple of things. Um, Let's talk about the spinning class first because it was an activity I did and I had the best time. Okay, so La Mercerie is doing their first, this was their inaugural, inaugural spinning class. Um, it is two weekends. So one Saturday and they're two hours each session. So it was two hours on a Saturday. Then we took the wheels home for the weekend, had some homework, and then it's two hours on a Saturday. I... Um, and the first one you learn how to do singles and then the second one, and then your homework is to finish your singles. And the second time, second class, you learn how to ply. Plying doesn't take as long. It didn't take us long as long to do, um, that class, but we got to ask way more questions. Cause like now you've played with two, we had two different, um, fibers to work with and had questions. Right. And also like talking more about the things the class was, um, instructed by Maya, who is what Maya made on Instagram. And she is so lovely. It was a really fun and educational class. Um, she had taken us, she's been spinning for like two years and she had taken a spinning class. And, um, this was like her improvement on that spinning class. And she's been spinning, you know, for herself a lot. And she has, I mean, she brought us some of the yarn that she's made and it's like, so good. It's so pretty. It's like one day, one day I'll make pretty yarn, but I did make a yarn. It's not very good. Um, but I'm going to show you guys because this is all part of growth, right? It's a new skill I have never done before. Um, I have not finished this. so I have not wet finished it yet. Uh, I do need to wash it. I need to smack it around a little bit. This is also part of what we talked about in the last class is like, how do you really finish your yarn? Um, and then I will probably just skein it back up like this. I don't, I don't want to have it like in a ball. Um, I got to use a nitty knotty for the first time, which I definitely always thought, even though I don't 
spin and had no context for this when people would say that I thought it was like nitty naughty which also I feel like makes sense no it's a nitty with d's naughty no k just saw it just ends anyway um I'm gonna make my own because you can do it with pvc pipes uh to have but I think you guys I'm gonna get a spinning wheel this is what I decided from the class. I said if I enjoyed it enough and I thought it was something I could do, I think I'm gonna make it. I had some very fun, encouraging remarks on here that you can see improvement quickly, that that's like a fun thing to get into. And that even if I don't know what exactly what I would make, there's like a lot of color work, just like just the color work part of sweaters, which is so true. And now that I've been on the lookout for this, I've also already started a whole bunch of patterns collection and a note for me of things that I wanna make with a hand spun that would not take a ton of hand spun eventually. Um, and so this is my yarn. That's my end. Sorry. It's a yarn. I mean, it does not look super awesome, but it's definitely like a two tone yarn. You can see there's lots of like thick, less, less densely spun parts. And then there's some of these guys here that are like super, super plied together. Um, this is definitely like a a worsted weight yarn like I did not get this super thin which is fine I was not trying to I was really just trying to get used to like what the heck drafting is um yeah and so I had a really great time so this weekend as as everybody maybe now knows because <laughs> I've been talking about it a lot we are going up to Bellingham and part of the trip is so that we can go to Northwest Yarns and try different wheels La Mercerie carries Kromsky wheels that's the only brand that they carry and a lot of that is because like their wholesalers and area and also like it's a, an aesthetic that fits their shop and um they have some different options that they can carry I really liked it we used the K Kromsky Fantasia it was a really nice wheel it's a really pretty wheel it's an aesthetic I'll put a picture up here um it's an aesthetic I like it doesn't look like an old lady like spindles with kind of which is fine those wheels are also fine it's just not my preference um it's in a price point that's really similar to a lot of other like kind of mid-range wheels. Uh, so it's not like oh, it's crazy expensive or anything. It's actually like the lower mid-range. So it might be what I buy. I have not decided. I am going to just go try some of these this weekend and then I'll make a decision. So I made a yarn, everybody. Um, my class in December is already full, but if you're a local and you want to like look out for it, you want to get into spinning, like please go take our class. I thought the class was done really well from start to finish. We did have some notes of things like that would be helpful for someone like me who knows nothing and went home and I was like, I really hope I remember all of this. <laughs> um, but like Maya is going to just make this class better and better over time and people will walk away with a yarn and that is so, so exciting. It's not very soft. So this, um, the fibers we spun was this darker gray is called Jacob. That's one I couldn't remember. Um, and the white is a Cheviot and they feel very different. They are such different types of fiber. Um, they look really nice together though. Um, there's a picture, which I'll try to find somewhere of all of our spun yarn. And you can see like Ariel's yarn, obviously looks amazing. Katie's yarn looks so consistent. <laughs> looks like real yarn. Mine looks like somebody's first attempt at yarn, which is fine. That's what it was supposed to be. Um, I do want to keep this. Someone gave me the really great tip. Like, just keep it. Don't do anything with it. Just, like, wash it, dry it. Keep your yarn as, like, that's a place to see your growth. And I definitely think that's a great idea because I know it's going to change dramatically over not a super long period of time. So, obviously, I had to buy some fiber. So, here's my fiber. I'll show you guys these first because um, they're like the less exciting ones. They had some Corydale. This is Corydale. Um, they just got some Ashford Corydale in the store. None of this is listed online, by the way. They are not doing their fiber online right now. Um, so this, oh, it's so soft. Um, these Corydales were also a minor suggestion to just like try a different fiber and that they'd be like medium easy to work with. Um, so I got this natural light, um, this dark gray, which I really, really love. It's like almost like a grainy bluey gray. And then I got a navy and I got four ounces in all of these. They were very, very affordable, like two something per ounce um, just to try something else. Um, so I can do some two tone spins. And also I'm going to try with one of them, just a single tone spin, because I do want to know what my tolerance is for like a sweater spin in the future. Why not learn now? Um, and then I got this most beautiful wee chickadee. 
We Chickadee also has a, an Etsy store, so you can get her stuff, but she does drops every once in a while and go. If you're a fiber lover and you spin, like her colors are absolutely amazing. I'm going to show a picture of Jess, Jess Spun in this color, which was definitely the influence, but I was like, oh, I want to make that immediately. I would like to make that right now. I will not. I will save this for a couple of months until I can spin something that looks remotely like yarn, like usable yarn. Um, so I think all of my, those were all my acquisitions, um, which was a lot, but it is what it is, right? So um, I got one other really interesting question and I'm going to just kind of um, give a base answer for this right now, but I, I will say like it super depends. So somebody asked me if I could say what I would call a sweater quantity of yarn and a t-shirt quantity of yarn. That's a very interesting question because it very much depends on the pattern. It depends on how much ease I want in the pattern. It depends like how much drape. It depends if there's like a lot of cables. Like obviously a t-shirt quantity I would think of as a t-shirt quantity is not going to cut it for like a sorry Nordlin cable all over t-shirt pattern, right? Like it's not, there's no way that's enough yarn. But I do have a thought in my head. So for me, typically um, three to four skeins of DK will get me a t-shirt. It really depends again on the drape and the construction. I'd say four skeins to be safe. That's what I would consider a t-shirt t-shirt quantity. For fingering weight, I would probably say two to three. Um, that depends. If it's a lighter fingering, I think I could get away with a t-shirt in two. Um, and that's like I would have to be a pretty drapey thing, right? So I made that um peep show pullover. It was like one of my first episodes I wore that. Um, and obviously I did have like a little bit of another yarn in there, but with those peeps and the drapiness of that, it was two skeins and I had very little left over. And it's a, it's not like a fitted t-shirt, right? So it really depends. Two to three. That's my answer. For sweaters, um, I can do a sweater in four skeins of fingering. That again, very much depends on the pattern. Some sweaters, I need six skeins of fingering. So I would say between four and six, knowing that you won't get every sweater out of four. Um, Brooklyn Raglan, I use less than four skeins for the Brook Brooklyn Raglan light. I use less than four skeins, um, like a lot less than four skeins, like three and three and a quarter or something like that. Um, for a sweater in like DK or worsted, I need six to eight skeins. I would say seven or eight is like, that'd have to be a cabled sweater. There'd have to be like something going on there. Um, but definitely six skeins at least. Uh, and that also depends on the weight of the DK, right? Like, uh, the Allie's, um, Exploring and Fibers, Rocky's DK is like the lightest DK that I have some of. It's 274 yards. Probably get away with five or six for a sweater that's a little bit fitted. Um, so I know this person who, who put the message like is about my size and you know, it just depends on the fit you want and the patterns you want. I typically have some patterns in my backpack back pocket that I'm like, Oh, I'd be happy. So if I buy yarn, a lot of times I'm buying with a sweater in mind or a potential set of sweaters in mind, um, or, or t-shirts. And so then I look at the yardage and be like, yep, yeah, I could get it out of that. Uh, but if I'm just like buying yarn, I'm like, oh, I want that, but I don't know. I would err on the side of like, if this screams a sweater color, then I would buy four to six skeins of fingering um, and six plus skeins of DK slash worsted. And if it was a t-shirt, you know, I'd do the same thing. I'd buy two to three in fingering and three to four, probably more like four in DK. So there's a little answer for you on that. Um, okay, let's do books real fast and then I have to go do my job. So, um, I was reading Covet. I haven't really been talking about the spiciness here, but that does, um, not been coming up as much. I've been reading a lot of like YA leaning books, not like really, really YA books, but, um, there's not that much spice or, you know, these like cozy mysteries. They didn't have any. Um, so Covet by Tracy Wolf, which is book three in the Crave series. I am done. I really liked it. I will read the next one. Um, there were some big reveals. There were some big gotchas in this one and it was good. It moved fast. Um, and then I also read The Last Graduate it was one of those other library books that came in for me. And this is the second in the Scholomance series, which I just read like a few weeks ago. Thought I was gonna be on hold for a really long time at the library, but I got it quickly. Um, and the first book is A Deadly Education. So this one is called The Last Graduate. 
it was shocking. It was amazing. And it was so scary. Like I just felt like there was a lot of parts. I was like, what, the f what is happening? Like, this is so crazy. There was a lot of good twists. Um, and then I started the golden enclaves right away because it was available. And even though I have other books from the library that I need to get done, I was like, nope, I need to know what's going to happen. This is just a trilogy. This is the last one I need to know. I am almost done this book already. Um, and this is also by Na Naomi no Novik and it is, um, the third and final book. It's so good. So good. So this series just does like a really quick, it's, um, a world in which magical people just live among us but they have um magic and what they call the void where they can essentially push and change reality a little bit to like give themselves extra space so like they're living among us but they've like carved out space outside of where we would expect and that's where like their cities and stuff are um but kids are targets for these like malevolent creatures in the world um and so they go to this very scary school, which is what, where it starts, uh, to learn how to protect themselves. And this whole arc is about a character who has um, a chip on her shoulder and she's very funny um, and has a lot of powers for potential evil. Um, yeah, but like tons of tons of character growth and story building it's it's really great um I am still I'm still reading The Great Hunt you guys I will get through this I just like got so enwrapped in these other books I didn't even pick it up like I listened to like 20 minutes I was like don't care right now I need to go back to <laughs> to one of these um I am still reading Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score which is book three of the Knock em Out series and then I am reading um The Evergreen Air by A.K. Mulford uh, which is the fourth book in the High Mountain Court series. And I'm very excited to um, wrap that. I'm like more than 50% done with that one. And I'm like very excited to wrap that up. So those are um, the books I'm reading. Yeah, no real spice in any of them. The AK Mulfer book will get spicy, but not like crazy, not crazy spicy, just nothing right now. So I can't give you a, I can't give you a rating. Um, yeah. And I like, this was a good week. I got a lot of knitting done. The spinning was so fun. It was also really fun. We hung out at La Mercerie for their crafternoon where they just have an open table for people to come knit on Saturdays. And it seems like there's a group of Bainbridge Island regulars that go over there and we were the newbies, but like, you know, newcomers, but there, everyone was super kind. They were talking about the projects they were making. It was really fun. Um, and yeah, two new tests. That'll be fun. Why did I do this? I Because I love test knitting. I mean, as much as I like grumble about it sometimes, I just love it. Love to be a little bit of a part of the design process um, and to give other people inspiration when they look at what testers have made. I, um, yeah, and then, okay, so knitting weekend is going to be so fun. I can't, I can't wait. I'm so excited. We, we even got together to knit this week and we could just like not stop talking about how excited we were to get together to knit again for a longer period of time. Uh, so that's, that's what I am looking forward to. Uh, we are leaving on a Friday. All of us took off work or partially took off work to, um, to leave in the early afternoon so we can get up to Bellingham with plenty of time to do a little yarn and wheel shopping first, sleep on it, go back and do some yarn and wheel shopping on Saturday and mostly just like hang out at the house and have a super, super chill knitting weekend. I will probably take a couple other craft things with me, like things that would be great to just get a couple of some time to do that I don't give myself dedicated because on the weekends even though I do knit a lot like I knit mostly while she's napping and I'm like otherwise occupied um and she naps but you know she's a baby it's not that much napping um she's a toddler almost now I mean she's one at the end of this month so so exciting uh yeah I'm just really pumped to have a weekend away to to just like have some girl time it's we love to spend time together. So, um, yes, I will potentially film some while we're there. I don't know. I'm going to talk to the girls and we'll see. Maybe just Ariel and I will film like a tiny bit of a segment to put up, um, at, with our friendship sweaters together, or we'll just take pictures. Honestly, we almost never have our phones out when we're together. So, like other than talking about patterns, we do do a lot of like talking about patterns. Oh, the last thing I wanted to bring up really fast is like my tiny high highlight dyer highlight is I talked about ZZ Net ZZ Textiles earlier um, in the episode because she is 
collaborating with Rachel for the Duotone. So we get a discount to test, which is really amazing. Um, but she just dropped yesterday her color collection. And you guys, I will pop a picture up here or two pictures because the colors are so good. There are only 10 colors. There are nine tonals. And then there is one variegated that has all of the tones from the tonals and it is so good you know what I didn't I wasn't even interested in this variegated even though you know I love a variegated yarn until I saw the swatch and then I said oh my god that's magic so swatches do make a difference I know there's a lot of dyers that don't do swatches and respect to them for not dying on every base and not doing like, I get it that's really expensive but sometimes it does make a difference for like what you would expect this color especially because there's so many colors in it for it to look like and I loved it. So I did get some. I got some for a project I will talk about when it gets here. And I'm very excited, but I got a lot of the colors. <laughs> um, just like one skein of a lot of the colors. So if you know what I'm making, like now you know, that's the yarn I'm using. But uh, yeah, I would totally suggest like you could get some really amazing sweaters for color or like colors for color work. Or just if you've got tonal dreams of sweaters, these are great collection she has some really fun bases um I think paisleyness is still open too if you want to shop her New Zealand drop um I think it might be open until like Saturday or Sunday I think she said a week uh yeah but go go buy yarn support these small dyers and yeah anyway um I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful weekend you know I'm going to and if you want to tell me I mean there's other like what are your tips and tricks you think maybe other people don't do while they're knitting? Like, let's share that. I feel like it's always so fun to get like things, unless you're knitting with somebody. And I mean, really a group of people, you're not going to pick up other things. Like, it's so interesting to see like what people do, like what hacks make it more comfortable for you to knit, what hacks just like make it more enjoyable. Um, that is all everybody. <laughs> Have an absolutely wonderful weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye.